So this video is a general overview of thermodynamics where it gives some of the basic ideas. So when two objects A and B are in thermal equilibrium with each other, then there will be no energy transfer and the two will have the same temperature. So there are different temperature scales such as the Celsius, Fahrenheit and Kelvin. In the Celsius scale, the freezing point is at 0 degrees Celsius and it corresponds to the temperature of water ice mixture at thermal equilibrium. And the boiling point is at 100 degrees Celsius and it corresponds to the temperature of water steam mixture at thermal equilibrium at atmospheric pressure. So one important concept is thermal expansion, where the volume of most substances increases with temperature and this is due to the change in the average separation between atoms or molecules. So the atoms can be imagined to be located at fixed equilibrium positions and connected by springs much like a simple harmonic oscillator. At ordinary temperatures, each atom will vibrate around its equilibrium position with a certain amplitude. But as the temperature increases, the amplitude of vibration will increase. But for the atom, the potential energy is not exactly like a simple harmonic oscillator, but is asymmetric, so it represents a spring that is easier stretched than compressed. So with temperature, the spring will stretch and this will lead to thermal expansion. So the increase in length is given by this equation, where alpha is the coefficient of expansion of the material, L i is the initial length and delta t is the change in temperature. So thermal expansion is the reason why railroads, tracks, and bridges include thermal expansion joints to compensate for the expansion in the summer. So another important law in thermodynamics is the ideal gas law. An ideal gas is a gas maintained at low pressure and density. And it was found that the temperature, volume, and pressure of the gas are related through the ideal gas law, where N is the number of moles of the gas and R is the universal gas constant. So as you can see, if the temperature of the gas is kept constant, then the pressure of the gas is inversely proportional to volume. So increasing the volume will reduce the pressure and vice versa. And this is because when the volume increases, there will be less number of molecules per unit volume and therefore less force exerted by the molecules per unit area at the walls of the container. And this will reduce the pressure on the walls of the container. And if the pressure is kept constant, then the volume is directly proportional to temperature. And this is because as the temperature increases, the molecules will have more energy and will go further apart, increasing the volume. And if the volume is kept constant, then the pressure is directly proportional to temperature. And so increasing the temperature will increase the pressure because the molecules will have more kinetic energy and so more force per unit area on the walls of the container. So an important theory is the kinetic theory of gases, which describes the ideal gas law from a microscopic point of view. So as discussed in the video of Lewis, the pressure is force per unit area, and this force is the combined effect of the collisions of the atoms and molecules with the walls of the container. The pressure is given by this equation and is related to the average kinetic energy of the molecule and the number of molecules per unit volume. And if we substitute this into the ideal gas law, we get this expression, which shows that the temperature of the gas is directly related to the average translational kinetic energy of the molecule. And Kb is known as Boltzmann constant, and it has the value of 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. So the higher the temperature, the higher the average translational kinetic energy of the molecule. So if we have a tire and we pump more air into the tire, then this will increase the number of molecules per unit volume, which will increase the pressure. And if the temperature of the air inside the tire is increased, then this will increase the average translational kinetic energy of the molecules, which will increase the pressure. So experiments by James Jules reveal that energy can be transferred to or from the system by work or by heat. Heat is defined as the amount of energy transferred from one substance to the other or between a system and its environment due to a temperature difference between the two. So heat always refers to energy in flow, in transit, because of a temperature difference. It never refers to the energy contained in the system, such as the internal energy. Work is also energy in transit and is not a property of the system. Because both are energy, the SI unit is the joules. Another unit is the calorie and this is the conversion factor.
So specific heat is defined as the amount of energy per unit mass that is required to change the temperature of a substance by 1 degree Celsius. Its units is joules per kilogram Celsius. The specific heat of copper is much less than water. This means that copper gets heated faster than water if the same amount of energy is added to both. So the heat transferred is equal to the mass times the specific heat times the resulting change in temperature. If the temperature increases, then delta T is positive and the heat is positive which means heat is transferred into the system. If delta T is negative, then Q is negative and energy is transferred out of the system. So the calorimeter is a technique used to measure the specific heat of a solid or liquid. Where a substance is raised to a certain temperature and then placed into a vessel containing cold water. If the vessel is a good insulator, then no energy will leave the system by heat or any other means. And after thermal equilibrium is reached, both the substance and water will have the same temperature. And from the conservation of energy for this isolated system, the amount of heat lost by the substance is equal to the amount of heat gained by water. So the heat gained by water is equal to the heat lost by the substance. And you can use this equation to find the specific heat of the substance. So substances with a high specific heat require a lot of heat to be added to have their temperature raised by 1 degree. And this depends on the number of degrees of freedom available to the atoms or molecules. The larger the degrees of freedom, the higher the specific heat. So let's take gas as an example. So in a monatomic gas, the sole contribution to the internal energy is the translational motion of the atom. But in a polyatomic or diatomic gas, there is translational motion in addition to rotation and vibration. So there are more degrees of freedom available to the molecule, which means any energy added will have more ways of sorting itself out among the different types of motion. And this means more energy is needed to raise the temperature of the gas and the higher the specific heat of the gas. So in some cases, the transfer of energy does not result in a change in temperature. Instead, the substance undergoes a phase change from solid to liquid which is melting or from liquid to gas which is boiling or evaporization or another type of phase change is the change in the crystalline structure of a solid so in this case the energy goes into breaking the bonds instead of going into the translational kinetic energy or vibration and this is why the temperature remains constant while there is a phase change so the energy required to change the phase state of a pure substance is given by this equation so m is the mass and L is the latent heat and it is the heat required per unit mass and has the unit of joules per kilogram. For any material at a certain pressure, the freezing temperature is the same as the melting temperature and the boiling temperature is the same as the condensation temperature. At these unique temperatures, the liquid or solid or liquid or gas respectively can coexist in what is known as phase equilibrium. So for example, if we add heat to ice slowly to maintain the system close to thermal equilibrium, then the temperature will remain at 0 degrees Celsius until all the ice has melted and the process is reversible. So we need to remove heat from water to freeze it at 0 degrees Celsius back to ice. So besides heat, work is another way of transferring energy to the system. So for example, for a gas contained in a cylinder with a frictionless movable piston, work is done on the gas by external applied force if the gas is compressed or expands. The first law of thermodynamics is an expression of the conservation of energy. So the change in the internal energy of the system is equal to the heat transfer to or from the system plus the work done on or by the system. So there are different energy transfer mechanisms. The first is conduction and it is the transfer of energy by heat from the hot to the cold region. At the atomic scale, the transfer mechanism is an exchange of kinetic energy between more energetic and less energetic atoms or molecules. The heated atom will vibrate with larger and larger amplitudes and collide with neighboring atoms, transferring energy in the process. Another contribution metals comes from free electrons, not just bound electrons vibrating about their equilibrium position. This is why metals are good thermal conductors. Another way is convection, and it is the transfer of energy through the movement 
movement of a fluid. For example, when the air above the flame is heated, it will expand and have less density and therefore it will rise upwards and it will transfer energy to your hand as it flows by. These drawings show the convection currents in a teapot and in a room heated by a radiator. Another transfer mechanism is through radiation. All objects radiate electromagnetic waves continuously because any accelerated electric charge emits electromagnetic radiation. And since the temperature of any object is due to the random motion of molecules, and since these molecules contain electric charges, it follows that any object radiates electromagnetic waves due to the thermal motion of its molecule. And this is known as thermal radiation. An object also continuously absorbs electromagnetic radiation from the environment. At the same time, it radiates electromagnetic radiation into the environment. Otherwise, the object would lose all thermal energy and its temperature would reach absolute zero. If the object is in equilibrium with its environment, it will radiate and absorb energy at the same rate and its temperature will remain constant. So energy arrives to Earth by electromagnetic radiation from the sun. So in nature, only certain types of conservation processes takes place that has a certain direction and this direction is expressed using the second law of thermodynamics. For example, energy transfer by heat is always from the hot to the cold, not the other way around. Another example is a container containing two different gas molecules that are separated by a membrane. And if the membrane is punctured, the two different gas molecules will naturally mix together. And after they are completely mixed together, we don't see them spontaneously self-organizing, where each different gas molecules go into one side of the membrane. The second law of thermodynamics is related to a quantity known as entropy. Entropy is a measure of disorder, and isolated systems tend towards disorder. When heat flows from the hotter to the colder object, initially the molecules are sorted out into hotter and colder regions, which is an ordered state. But this order is lost when the system reaches thermal equilibrium, and the disorder of the system is increased which means entropy is increased. In this example of the free expansion of the gas, the molecules will have a greater randomness of position after expansion, instead of being sorted out and ordered at one side of the container. So the natural direction of processes is when the entropy increases. And the reason is probability. A disordered microstate is way more probable than an ordered microstate. So in the case the system is not isolated, we must consider the change in entropy of the system and its environment. Consider water freezing and forming a snowflake, which is a highly ordered state. While it freezes, the water releases energy into the environment that will create disorder somewhere else. And this disorder will represent an increase in entropy that is larger than the decrease in entropy in the snowflake flake itself. And so the total entropy of the system and its environment will increase in the process of freezing. Mm -hmm.